Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, let's talk about why the heck Logic Pro has two master faders at the end of the mixer. So if you open the mixer, go all the way to the right, you're gonna see both a stereo output fader or analog one and two, output one and two, whatever the naming scheme is in your version of Logic Pro and the master fader. And I find there's a bit of confusion as to how these faders will impact the overall level and loudness of your stereo project. When you bounce that track out, it will have an impact. And also, what do these two different faders do? What is their, what's the purpose for them? They actually both each have a specific function. And I wanna show you how all of this works right now. Okay, so master fader, stereo output fader, why do we have two of these things? Before we dig into that though, let me just quickly point out that the project on screen is the brand new Corey Wong producer pack that came out for Logic Pro for iPad and for GarageBand for iPad and iOS. This comes with a Corey Wong Live Loops grid and it's pretty freaking awesome. So I saved it on Logic Pro for iPad, then I ported it to the Mac, and then I dragged all the loops into the tracks area. So that's what we're working with today. Let's even take a quick listen to it because it's pretty cool. All right, so noticing the stereo output in the inspector on the left-hand side, you can see that the overall level is banging around zero dB in terms of peak values. And if I pop open the loudness meter here, let's take a quick listen and look again at the short-term value for LUFs or loudness units full scale. So this producer pack, this live loop grid is banging around negative 12 LUFs for short-term value. Noticing these details will be important momentarily. If I hide the plugin, let's open the mixer. And again, we seem to have two faders that impact the overall level of the entire project. One is called the stereo out and the other is the master fader. And notice that as I adjust the master fader, the slider up here in the control bar is also adjusted. So first thing to know is that the slider in the control bar is one and the same with the master fader in the mixer. This is a quick and easy way for you to adjust the overall level of your project without having to think too hard about it. So you're recording, you're producing, and you know, you just need a quick and easy way to adjust levels. Now, as I stated, the stereo out and the master are not the same thing. They have two different functions. Let's start with the stereo out channel strip. Notice that every channel strip for every track in this project, the drums, percussion, horns, electric piano, all the guitars, the reverb and delay, all of their outputs are set to stereo out. This is the default output for your audio interface, for your Mac's internal speakers. And this is assigned based on, if we go to Logic Pro, settings and audio, this is assigned with the IO settings here. For a stereo project, the output will play back, in my case, on playback one and two. The naming scheme for your audio interface, USB microphone may be different, but it's a likely scenario that's just gonna be outputs one and two. One of the benefits of a stereo output channel is that you can apply processing to the entire project. So if you wanna apply some compression to the whole project, an EQ or a limiter, you can. You can process your entire mix as a whole. Of course, you can also apply the brand new Mastering Assistant plugin to the entire project as well. But we're gonna skip that for now. There's also the ability to balance the entire mix to the left or to the right. Check out last week's video if you wanna learn more about the balance knob. 
Of course, there's the ability to adjust the overall level of the entire project with this fader. And you have this convenient bounce button with which you can bounce out your entire project to a single stereo file. All right, so that's pretty cut and dry. Now, one thing I do notice from questions and projects that I receive, and I, you know, I talk to different Logic Pro users, one thing I notice is that some folks don't really realize that this fader right here has an impact on the overall loudness of your entire project when you bounce it out. Notice again, when I had the loudness meter open, that this was showing us a short-term value, roughly about negative 10, negative 12, and the peak value was hitting zero dB. So this project is ready to be shared and I could bounce out the entire project. Let's do that right now. I'll call this bounce stereo output, no fader adjustment and click bounce. Then I'm going to adjust this fader and drop it by let's say about 15 decibels. Once again, I'll bounce. I'm gonna call this stereo output negative 15 fader and hit bounce. Let me pop this back up, close the mixer for now, and let's navigate to the finder here and let's drag these two files in. And let's create new tracks. Now for right now, let's just focus on these two tracks right here. This track called no fader adjustment, of course, the bounce where I didn't adjust the stereo output fader. And then the second track, the negative 15, is where I did drop the stereo output by negative 15. And as you can see, there's a distinct level difference between these two audio files. In fact, we'll just listen to the project, but I'm gonna copy and paste the loudness meter to both of these files and pop them open so we can see the differences in terms of loudness. No fader adjustment, negative 15 fader adjustment. Take a look and a listen. There is clearly about a 15 decibel difference between this file right here and the second. So even though the loudness meter on the master output maybe says negative 12 on it, even when I reduce the fader right here, when I bounce out the track, it will ultimately be another negative 15 decibels quieter than the loudness meter is reading. This value right here is not accurate at all. I would actually need a loudness meter after the fader here. The point I'm trying to drive home here is, is that this will have a direct impact on your bounces that you upload to streaming, that you share with your friends and family, that you check out on your phone or in your car. So the stereo output channel strip allows you to process, adjust the level, balance your entire project as one, assuming that every track and channel strip in your project is ultimately being sent to the main stereo output of your audio device that is specified here in Logic Pro settings and audio. So this output device right here, all of these tracks at the moment are being sent to outputs one and two. But notice I said assuming, because this might not necessarily be the case. That brings us to the master channel strip. Now the master channel strip will also adjust the overall loudness of your entire project. So once again, let's set this to negative 15 and click bounce. And I'm gonna call this master negative 15. All right, let's pump this back up, close the mixer, go to the finder and drag the master right in. Now notice that these two right here, the negative 15 stereo output, negative 15 master fader, they look identical. And that's because they both were dropped by 15 decibels. So once again, if I pop on the loudness meter, if we take a look at all three, so no fader adjustment, stereo output negative 15, master negative 15, Take a listen and a look. Hmm. 
Right, so there's a clear issue here when we start to play with the faders of the stereo output in the master fader. So what's their purpose? I think just for easy level management of your entire project when you're trying to record and produce, you know, sometimes maybe you got a microphone preamp that can't go quite that loud, but the whole project is so loud and humongous. So maybe you want to drop the volume temporarily as you're producing and songwriting and recording. But when you're done producing, recording, songwriting, I think it's a good practice to just set these faders to zero because fader adjustments on these two channel strips just cause more confusion later on than they help. So for my own projects, I just leave these two faders alone from beginning to end. I don't touch them. But again, what's the purpose of the master fader? It's essentially a VCA fader, which is fancy speak for a remote control fader for multiple channel strips. Let me illustrate. So far, every channel strip and track is being spit out to the stereo output, outputs one and two. However, if I take my drums here and send it not to the stereo output, but outputs three and four on my audio interface, we get a new channel strip. And now we won't hear the drums on outputs one and two, but you'll see now the level meters jumping around for outputs three and four. Take a look. Okay, so we see the drums are playing. We don't hear them on outputs one and two. That's fine. Let's now take perhaps the percussion, the horns, electric piano, and spit them out to five and six. Okay, we get another new channel strip. And let's spit everybody else out perhaps on, I don't know, seven and eight. And maybe we'll get some reverb and delay. I'll pump these up so we hear that on outputs one and two. Okay, so you know output one and two has reverb going to it. You know three and four has the drum kit going to it. Five and six has percussion, horns, electric piano, and seven and eight have the bass and guitars. Here's where the master channel strip comes in, is that we can adjust the relative level of all the outputs from one single fader. As you can see, I can send different channel strips to different outputs on my audio interface, assuming that I have multiple sets of outputs to send audio through. And then I can use the master fader to adjust the level of all the outputs simultaneously. Now you might be wondering who does this actually benefit? Well, for some folks who have a lot of outputs on their interface that want to send discrete headphone mixes to different performers. If you wanna send audio to a separate playback device, some outboard gear that gets pumped back in. I recognize for many of us, this is not an issue or concern, but the point is stereo output fader manages the level of your entire project as long as every track and channel strip is being pumped to the main stereo output. For 99% of us, that's probably gonna be the case. The master channel strip is a VCA fader for adjusting the levels of all outputs simultaneously. And both faders will adjust the overall loudness of your entire project, even when you bounce it out meaning don't necessarily trust the loudness meter on your stereo output if it's telling you negative 14 luffs. If you've pumped down or pumped up this fader or this fader at all. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to Wide Logic Pro Rules on the website here on the YouTube channel and be sure to check out the description below. I always have PDFs, templates, guides to help you in your journey with Logic Pro. Thanks so much and I'll see you for more next week. Take care.